Now, my topic today, the message that the Lord has given me, uh, the topic, I, I rarely give to, I, I use, try to, to use topics because I hear when you are, you are teaching, you must have a topic for your, your message. Sister Joyce is still teaching me homiletics. Are they called homiletics or athletics? <laughs> Whatever they are. Lord, open our eyes to see. Lord, open our eyes to see. Hallelujah. God has given us eyes to see things. Anyone who does not see lives a very difficult life. I think you have seen blind people. You have to guide them. They go looking all over. And it is a very difficult life if you have no eyes to see. You live a life of struggle. Highs signal information which is used by the brain to elicit the perception of color, shape, depth, uh, depth movement, and other features. So eyes are very key because they connect with our brain to show us how you look like, your color, and images. Without that, you live a very difficult life. In other words, our eyes have the capacity to process information in order to be able to distinguish clearly the thing that you see, the thing that you see. Similarly, when we get saved and we are filled by the Holy Spirit, God gives us special eyes, and this is very important, to see and discern spiritual things. This means spiritual eyes have the capacity or capability to process special information in order to be able to distinguish clearly the spiritual things you see, spiritual things that you see. So when you get saved, you still continue to have your physical, natural eyes, and you also get another special set of eyes which discern spiritual matters. And that is very important for people that are born again. And uh, so you are able to process inside and see things which others don't see. And that's why in Jeremiah, he was telling Israelites that they have eyes, but they don't see. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20 to 23. I will read this in NIV version. He says, announce this to the descendants of Jacob and Proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord. Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand, the sand and the boundary for the sea an everlasting barrier it cannot pass, cross. The waves roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it over. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. Jeremiah was lamenting that we have people who have seen great things with their physical eyes. They have seen the seas that roll, and God has put a barrier. And that water will do whatever it does, but it will never cross that barrier. So they have seen great things. But he says they have eyes, which means they have naked eyes that they can see, but they are not able to see. What is he saying? You can't discern spiritual things. You are there, you can see things, but you can't discern, you can't process spiritually things so that you can understand what is going on. Oh, Lord, give us eyes to see. This is the prayer we need to have. So that we may say, oh, Lord, help me to see. Give me eyes to see. Let me see. Because we may live with you seeing many things, but you are not able to discern the depth of matters. And therefore, you live a miserable life as a believer. The same words were echoed by Jesus in Mark chapter 8, 
verse 18, he says, you have eyes and you don't see the same thing. Oh my, you have eyes but you don't see. God wants to give us eyes so that we can see. There are so many things that happen around us, but we are not able to see. God is willing to give us eyes to see. Of course, we see with our naked eyes, but there are other things you can't process that you, you, God wants you to see, you don't see. And that's why we have problems in, 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 our, in our salvation. We have so many people who walk around saying they are born again, but you don't, they don't see. They do certain things that you wonder, are these people seeing? And that is what Jeremiah was trying to correct. You people, what is your problem? He even he called them you foolish people. You know, if today I called you foolish, I'm sure they will not come back to church, Pastor. They will go away. Pastor was abusing us. He was calling us names. But this is a man of God telling Israelites, you are foolish because you, you have eyes, but you can't see. God wants us to see. Hallelujah. God is interested in us seeing. God wants to give you eyes. Those eyes that can see and discern spiritual things so that we can live much better in this world. We live the way we live, but may, maybe you have never known you can see other things. And you can live a better life when you see other things. Hallelujah. You stay with the people, you see them prospering, and you wonder what is happening. They prosper because there are things they see you don't see. You have eyes, but there are just things that are rotating somewhere in your face. You can see some things, but there are others you can't see. Oh, Lord, we need that prayer. May you open our eyes to see. Hallelujah. God is willing to reveal certain things to us. He wants us to see with our spiritual eyes. Let us look at some interesting scripture in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 23 to 24. Chapter 23 to 24. And these bottles are very hard to open. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. You are a servant of God. I didn't expect to drink water, but... Uh, I realize when you stand here, something happens. <laughs> Some things begin to drain you. I don't know how they are. Because they know I'm preaching about eyes to see, spiritual. So they must try to <clears throat> fight back. Luke chapter 10, verse 23. I think this is um, King James Version. And he returned. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And he, re, and he turned. This is Jesus. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Amen. Jesus makes a private statement. He, he pulls his disciples aside and talks to them privately that blessed are you that you see those things that you have seen. Many prophets, many kings have desired to see those things, but they have not seen. To hear what you have heard, but they have not heard. You know, you keep wondering, what are these things that they have seen which other people don't see? And you know, as you read Luke chapter 10, you will discover this in King James Version. It is a situation where Jesus appointed 70 men. I realize some Bibles call them 72. I don't know why the discrepancy. Whatever the number is, but he appointed some men and to go out and witness. To go from city to city. This is a place where you were saying when you enter somewhere and you are not received well, you will dust your, your feet, you know? But where you are received, enjoy life, eat well, 
and bless that family. So he appointed these men, and they went two by two, from city to city, from house to house. They were actually preaching the gospel and witnessing. And they saw things. In fact, they came back with a report, and they were so excited, telling Jesus, even devils were obeying us. You know, but when we use your name, devils will obey us. When we use your name. And you know people were healed. You know demons were ran away. And so many things happened out there when we went. But because we used your name, things happened. So I keep asking, why was Jesus pulling them aside and telling them privately, not even openly, privately, saying, blessed are your eyes. Because they have seen things which others have been trying to look for, to see. You, have, you are blessed to have those eyes. Hallelujah. Do you want to have those eyes that can see? And being blessed because you have eyes that see things that kings have tried to look for, prophets have tried to look for, but they are not able to see. And you know, as I was meditating, I discovered that the things they saw was a revelation of Jesus Christ. They saw Jesus revealed because they had, they had seen Jesus, but they had not seen him that way. So there is something they saw that people did not see. They saw Jesus revealed. They saw Jesus with the power to save. Jesus with the power to cast out demons. They saw Jesus as the Son of God revealed to them. They had eyes they were seeing Jesus, but they had not seen this revelation. Hallelujah. Today you need a revelation of Jesus. You need to see Jesus properly so that as you talk about Jesus, he's not just another man who comes around and does things, you have a revelation of who Jesus is. And this is why he called them aside and told them, many people have not seen this. So blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. Amen. Hallelujah. May we have our eyes open to see what people don't see, what others are trying to see, and they have not seen. We need that one. Believe us. I believe today. If we call those eyes to see things that others are struggling to see, we will be saved in this church. We will see certain things that people don't see. And we will be able to do certain things that people don't do. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday, Bishop was telling us how he got a revelation of RCPS. Because the other day, I had asked him quietly, how did you know these things? You know, he had a high which I didn't have. I have eyes, but I couldn't see. So when we get these eyes, we will be able to see things that others don't see. And we will do certain things that people will be amazed how we are doing things. Hallelujah. Don't you want those things? I don't want Jeremiah to come here and call you foolish. Because you have eyes, but you don't see. You have had the gospel how many years? Every time, Bishop, you are preaching how many years? People are just saying, hallelujah, right on, man of God. We love you. Now, that is not enough. Do you see those things? Do you have eyes to see? Hallelujah. We need these spiritual eyes this morning. We need them because it's important to have these spiritual eyes. We cannot remain the way we are forever. We will we will have underperformed in our lives. You know, I, sometime I remember how, uh, uh, by the way, I'm a fasting driver. But as I age, I start feeling not too confident when I'm on the road. I'm not cruising the way I used to cruise. But even today, if we go with you, you see, I, I try. I try. I try. But then when you are driving along the car road, and it is a four, what are, how many lanes? Four lanes this side, four lanes on the other side. You find a guy with a machine, a huge thing like the one of Bishop. And the guy is just strangling there. I, I overtake him with my kuluga. I feel good, you know. <laughs> the problem is, 
This guy has a heavy machine that performs well, but he's underperforming. He's not performing. Hmm? As God has given us a machine that should perform to a certain level of capacity. When we go to heaven, he will ask us, why did you underperform? I gave you eyes to see, but you don't see. Why are you underperforming? I hope you are hearing. May you get that revelation. May God open your eyes to see. So that you will not arrive there and he, told, he tells you, you should have done this and this and this and this. Oh, this was yours. Lost your Lord. Oh, this was yours. But you just got this. It's because he gave you eyes to see and you refused to see. Tell your neighbor, open your eyes to see. Open. Hallelujah. Amen. Open your eyes to see. Amen. Let's perform to capacity. Amen. There are benefits that accompany open eyes to see. And I want to share those ones quickly. I still have some time. I still have some. I think today I'm performing well. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm doing well. I'm so happy. Amen. Yesterday I didn't perform well. I never even followed my message. Benefits of open eyes to see. I'll give you four benefits. One, to understand spiritual things. When you have open eyes to see, you are able to understand spiritual things, spiritual matters, because they are not understood by anybody. You know, you could be in this church and have discovered people like going to church. <laughs> That's why many times you ask for people to get saved. They refuse to get saved because they are ashamed of being seen. They have been here for 10 years, but <laughs> people will wonder, you mean you have not been saved all these years? But they have been sitting here for this many years. I did, you know, there is a lady who was very active in my church in Otawala. Then one day, the, the daughter had a challenge, so she was brought to me by somebody else. And as we talked, I discovered she's not born again. But she has been very active in church. So there are many people seated here <laughs> who may not have gotten the revelation of Jesus Christ. But they are sitting here. And they are very active. They give tithes and offering. You may even be tempted to give them ministry leadership. But they are not born again. That's why we need to open our eyes to see. Amen. So that we can see. I'm looking for that time when the choir comes here to sing. I can see. Amen. I can see. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I'll tell you that if I remember how you see. <laughs> Just stand here and I scan. Tell you why are you standing there. Get out of there. You don't deserve to sing. Makali, brother Makali, that you need the eyes to see. So that we don't defile the pulpit. Amen. Amen. Nowadays we have no eyes. Demons can dance around in the pulpit. Because we have no eyes to see. We need those eyes to see, Bishop. Amen. So that we don't allow demons right. to come and enjoy us around here. I say in that church, which is so beautiful, we also own certain portions there. Demons, I'm telling you. We need to have eyes to see. Right. And we need some power to chase them. These 70 men had been with Jesus. And until they went out and they used the name of Jesus. And they saw things happening. That's when they got excited. And that time when they were telling Jesus that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost and was enjoying and feeling good. That finally, the revelation of Jesus as the Son of God as a healer, as a miracle worker, has been revealed to these people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Buana zifiwe sana. To understand spiritual matters, number one. Let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 14, King James Version. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 
This is a message that I know Gio loves. I appreciate you. Natural man, I know. Very much. So we have so many natural men <laughs> seated here. We need to up, when I say I, I, I am not mentioning you directly, I'm not saying it's you really, but search your heart. <laughs> search your heart. You could be sitting here and you are a natural man. You can never understand spiritual matters because they are discerned spiritually. And that's why you need these highs. If you get these highs, one of the benefits is that you'll be able to understand spiritual things. These natural men and women who come to our ministries, they are the ones who cause chaos. They are the ones who want the positions. They are the ones who want to be seen to be closer to the bishop. Do you know there are people who would want to take selfies with the bishop? And immediately they are posting in social media. I was with the bishop. I mean, why can't you say you are with a smaller fellow somewhere who is not known? But you say, I'm with the bishop. Then there are the people who are fighting for things. There are the people who are backbiting. There are people who are, who are causing division in ministry because they have no revelation of Jesus. They are coming here with some other interests. Do you know, by the way, we serve God with no interest? I can tell you for true. I serve God with no interest. That's why when you call me Ndijio, I feel humbled because I didn't even expect it. it. I didn't even see it coming. Because I serve God with no interest. I've been in Utawala now for nine years serving God. We have raised so much money building a cathedral. I am not paid by anybody. Over, 70, over 87 million we are put in there. Hallelujah. But I don't call a treasurer aside and tell him you need to give me something. No. Because I'm serving God. I'm serving God. A time will come when I will begin to milk. And the milk will be much. It will be flowing. And that time I will be bought a big car like you have done for your bishop. Some, some people will identify my car is underperforming. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That's just a joke. It's a, it's a commercial break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So these guys are the guys who speak very many things. They are busy confusing us in ministry. When we are going this direction, they don't see. So they begin to take us in different directions. They begin to ank you. In many things, they keep talking. They keep seeing stripes, you know? You know, they even keep analyzing who became, who became, who became a deacon. Bishop, there could be people here who analyze the list of deacons in this church. I say, how many lawyers? How many cambers? These are natural men that we have. Say, ah, ah Bishop is from Western. No wonder. <laughs> the ideas which we don't see when we are serving. We don't see these things. It is actually the other day I saw some things which I have never thought about. Right. I, 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 I just imagined when Pastor Simon went to be with the Lord. I just discovered when, when Ngek came to be, and we didn't know because we were serving God. And because we are looking at men and women who have been faithful in ministry, we discovered in the Ngek there were two kisses, and there were two lawyers, and there were two campers. Finished. We didn't know. No idea. no idea because our interest was not on that. We were preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you are sad. Natural people who don't understand spiritual matters are dangerous. And that's why I'm preaching that our eyes be opened so that we can begin to see spiritual matters and serve God with no other interest. Buenas if you are sad. Let's move to number two. Number two is, uh, is a benefit of open eyes to see. It is they are able to see deep secrets in life. Deep secrets. I can tell you, if you have no eyes to see, you are missing a lot. 
You are born again, but you are missing a lot. You need to go on deeper so that you can see things deeper and be able to see secrets that others don't see. Hallelujah. Let's look at Elijah. I think you know the story of Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 8, chapter 6, verse 8 to 12. Let me read quickly. Then the king of Syria warned against Israel, okay, warred, warred, went to war, against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. Verse 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Verse 10. And the king of Syria sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once, not, not, not twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet, that is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that thou speakest, even in thy bed chamber. Even in thy bed chamber. Now, the king of Syria wanted to fight the king of Israel. And every time he plans, Elisha will see. He will see. And then he runs to the king of Israel and tells, my friend, you are being attacked this way. So don't go this side, go this way. And it was not once, not twice, several times. And you, the king of Syria, said, we have a mall. You know there's something called a mall? We have some, some secret ancient here within ourselves. Who tells Israel that we are attacking? No, they looked around and one servant said, my king, don't worry. There is a man in Israel called Elisha. He sees everything and tells the king everything. Amen. Even what you are talking in your bedroom. He knows. he knows. How was he knowing? He had spiritual eyes to see. Amen. These are the spiritual eyes I'm talking. You can see in deep things and you can save yourself many things because you have eyes to see in deeper things. Hallelujah. You know, there is one sister in my church who was traveling to Machakos. And when she went to the Matatu, she, she, they sat in the Matatu. And the Matatu took too long to leave. You see the way the Manambas do their things. They tell you that it is full. Then as you enter, one goes out. Then as you enter, another one. You stay there. You discover you are the first to enter, by the way. So in the car, then there was one lady who was feeling agitated. She left and picked another matter to her head and went. Now, finally, when this matter to end, our sister was testifying. She found that matter to which went ahead had a very serious accident. And the lady who got out was on the floor there, dead. That tells you, if you have spiritual eyes to see, you can see even the matter too, you should enter. Even the hotel, you should go. Have, you know, all these things. And there are testimonies, testimonies of people who have seen things before they happen because they have spiritual eyes. I want you to desire these spiritual eyes so that you can see dangers ahead of you. You'll be able to see revelations. And that's why yesterday who came for leadership training, I told them that there are things you talk about us and we see. Then you begin wondering, how did they see? So you begin saying, and you begin saying, we see. Don't backbite your bishop. Don't backbite people. We are, God helps us to see. By his grace, we can see. But I pray to us today that we will be able to open to get these spiritual eyes. And you can get them when you plunge yourself deeper in the things of God. Amen. Deeper. There are people who don't want to get deeper. There are people who don't want to pray more. 
There are people who don't want to read the Bible more. There are people who don't desire to have that experience with God. We are satisfied with where we are. You don't want challenges when you get deeper. You, then demons also increase their, their, their fight against you. So when you get deeper and you get challenges, you say, hey, 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 why are you juju? Nikosawa. Well, utakuwa sawa, but you will not be able to see some things. You need eyes to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need those eyes to see. Hallelujah. It's very important to be able to see what people are speaking and are saying. And you remember the case of Ananiah and Sapphira. Ananiah and Sapphira, Peter was not there when they were talking about what they are going to say. When they discussed to go and sell their land, Peter was not there. And when they say they will keep some as apart, Peter was not there. But the moment they entered and they started speaking, the first man is Ananiah who entered and started talking, Peter saw, hallelujah. Peter had eyes to see, he saw. And that's why the man died on the spot. The wife came three hours later, swinging hallelujah. and having a catwalk. Excited because they are giving. Where? I can say, yes, we agreed. Where? Because a man of God could see. And that's why I'm saying, even us here in church, God help us to see. Because we don't want to have every Tom Doc, what are they called? Tom Dick and Harry. We don't want to have everything happening here, because we need to understand, be able to see people who are not doing well, who are not living well. You beat your wife last night and you are leading prayer here. You know, people are not ashamed. They, they are shameless. You fought last night and you cannot even feel remorseful. You come before the out and you are about shatara. Sometimes we don't even know whether those tongues are of God. Oh, they are from where? <laughs> you see? So we need to discern. Amen. Alan, Amen. get into the next level. Amen. Hallelujah. Ukika pale unawaskan. Akipiti hapa tu anaingia unaona. Eh, 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 eh. Hallelujah. Isn't it possible? It is possible. Our churches have become strange. Because everybody is there. People are all saved. Did you know everybody is saved nowadays? Ukienda mahali ata kwa political rally. Bwana yesu zifiwe. Amen. Bwana, they even quote scriptures. Why? <laughs> Number three. If you have eyes to see, you don't fear. That spirit of fear disappears because you have spiritual eyes to see right. deeper secrets. And therefore, you are able to see your enemies. You are able to see everything and you have no fear. And as we go back, because of time, to, to, to Elisha's story, to Elisha's story, the king of Syria was agitated because he discovered there is that prophet who is revealing secrets. So he decided to mobilize the armies, horses and chariots, to go and look for Elisha. They surrounded the city and the place where he was residing. Then his man, his servant, who was a natural man, woke up, he couldn't see. But because he had eyes to see naturally, he saw the troops, because they, they, they surrounded at night. So when he woke up very early in the morning, he discovered they are surrounded all over by heavy military surrounding to attack. He got shocked and ran and cried, man of God, what are we going to do? You know, he caused panic in the camp because he can't see. You know, people who don't see will cause panic. People who don't see will cause confusion. That's why when you go for a meeting, you are discussing how to sing Cecilia. There are some guys here who don't see. They will begin telling you, Iyo wimbo imeraruka, ili raruriwa nanani. 
Ade hiyo wimbo hayo mzee sana. I'm telling you as long as it's the word of God it will minister to people. It is those people who don't see. They bring confusion, natural people. The servant of Elijah brought confusion, panicking. Man of God, we are surrounded. What are we going to do? He said, oh God. He just went into prayer, the man of God. Oh God, open his eyes to see. You know, the prophet had seen. He was not scared. You don't need to fear. There is a song that uh, Macaulay sings. Uh, you don't need to fear. I, I don't know how to sing nowadays. You know, that gift went away. It was taken away. I don't even remember songs. I fabble around. So when you don't put them there, I don't sing. <coughs> eh? There is a song which says, I don't need to fear. I am a child of God. I think it goes like that. Because you are a child of God, you don't need to fear. Oh, they are retrenching us because of corona. You don't need to fear. You are seeing. You know this is happening. You don't need to see, to fear. Because you can see. The servant came running and scared. God opened his eyes to see. God opened his eyes. He looked around. Why was he not seeing? Because these things are discerned spiritually. You can't see them. He opened his eyes and saw around. They are surrounded themselves with the chariots of fire. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This servant did not know that. That we serve a mighty God and great God. And therefore we are surrounded by, you know, many things, many things that are happening. You are surrounded. If you are a child of God and you are truly saved, you are not a joker in salvation. You know we have many jokers here. Bishop, uh, that evangelistic spirit, Iko. Sometimes I see jokers. I see jokers joking around with salvation. We only need some, something to happen. There is a preacher who used to say, if there was a magnet that would pull people and it is placed there, you will be shocked here, Bishop. You have no people. They will be hanging out there. They have been plucked by the magnet. Say, Hata Sicilia Koko, you. What do I mean, Bishop? Because we have jokers around. They can't see, but they look faithful. Jokers around in the house of God. Tell your neighbor, stop joking. Stop joking. No, with a bit of uh, love. Eh? <laughs> stop joking. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Elijah did not fear. He just prayed, opened his eyes to see. And the eyes were open. So that's some benefit. You don't fear because you are able to see enemies and things that are about to happen. Finally, you can see heaven. You know, we have, <laughs> we have seen many people witnessing to us that they went to heaven, they did. Others say they died, I don't know what, whether it's true or not. But it can happen. If you are a man that can see spiritually, you can. And I won't read this because of time. I think you know the story Oh, 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 of this man of God was being stoned, Stephen. When Stephen was being stoned, he looked up and saw Jesus seated on the right hand side of the Lord. Oh, Rabba Shin Rabba. Oh, yes. He saw. You can see, by the way, because you have eyes to see things that others don't see. Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. Hallelujah. We in this, I desire those house, eyes, Bishop. I want to be able to see. I want to be able to see. And as I conclude, because we are out to conclude five times, as I conclude, <laughs> I will remind you something. And this is very serious. Walk with this one. If you don't want to see, God is going to raise his stones to see. He has the capacity to raise stones. He wants you to see, but you don't want to see. So you will tell stones, wake up and see, because these guys have refused to see. Actually, one time, he, he helped a donkey to see. Balaam 
a prophet could not see the angel. Go and read very well. He never saw the angel. And, and that's why he was beating the donkey. The donkey would approach and see the angel, but then, the, you know, it the, the, the tries to go this side, the angel moves this side, the donkey can see, but the man of God, if he was a man of God, could not see. He was one of the pretenders or prophets, like some of us here, who can be picked by the magnet. He couldn't see. He couldn't see. But the donkey was able to see. So God is able to make, and you know, the donkey decided to discuss with the boss. And they talked, not one word. You know, you can say the donkey said, ha, huh? or yes, what? Well, they talked things with the donkey. They conversed with the donkey. God is able to give donkeys power to see if men don't want to see. He said, Jesus said, if you stop praising me, I will order stones to rise up. Stones will quickly rise up and sing. Can you imagine a stone singing? A stone singing. Let's pray. We thank you, Father. May you open our eyes to see. Many times we preach and people enjoy the message. But they go home with nothing other than the laughter. I am praying today, Lord, that you will open their eyes to see. They will not get out with the happiness and laughter but they will go out there and search their hearts because they must see. They must begin to see spiritual things. Father, help us as believers that we don't remain the way we, we got when we were saved many years ago. We will change and begin to improve and begin to see things. This will help us in our lives. We thank you, Father. We bless you. For we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop.